So for this project I had two 52 by 15 inch windows that I had picked up at a garage sale. I think they were only $10 a piece. I sanded them, washed them, painted them, and then silly as it sounds, took them both out to the garage and actually just sanded them again to distress them. Then I took some green and white stained glass and cut seagrass out of them long strands and then took this out to the garage and went ahead and sanded the sharp edges off. Now you can put stained glass in a tumbler but these pieces were so long and thin that I thought it was best that I sanded them. I was really afraid that they were going to break. And this is my little stained glass sander that I picked up on Amazon. Then I took them in the house, washed them, and rinsed them and then laid them out to dry. Next I cleared off my long table and I set out some templates on the table that matched the window panes in both of the windows. I thought it would be best to set everything up this way first so I didn't make a mess on the windows and had to re-clean them all over again. So I started with crushed shells that I had picked up at Michael's, seashells, starfish, and then I went ahead and laid out the stained glass the way that I wanted it. And then I also had this jewelry that I had picked up at Michael's that I thought would make perfect fish for the bottom. I thought they were real pretty and shiny. Then I went through my small pieces of teal tumbled glass to make up the tails of each of the fish. I thought those were real cute. And this is all glass that I picked up at garage sales and thrift stores, broken up and tumbled in my tumbler for up to a week. For the eyes, I used a little black bead and a green sequin, and I attached it all with the E6000 to each of the fish. Next, I assembled a couple of little crabs at the bottom by drawing the picture at first and then taking the amber uh, tumbled glass and finding two bodies and then going ahead and putting his little uh, legs on. I used these pieces of jewelry for the eyes. It was actually a bracelet that I had picked up at a garage sale, and I've used it in multiple projects, uh, pieces from it to make eyes on various uh, animals and whatnot. And I actually use those same eyes for the um, seahorses. Next, I set up the seahorses by tracing out the seahorse on the piece of paper, and then I used the tumbled blue glass that I had. Again, glass I picked up at garage sales and thrift stores, broken up and tumbled in my tumbler, and I just went ahead and laid the whole project out. And I actually ended up making three of these, but only ended up using two in my project. So next, I actually did not film uh, breaking up this glass, but this is called a fluted bowl. And that's what I used to make the jellyfish. So here it is already broke up and I had broke it up months and months ago, but I guess I didn't f film it or else I, um, I don't know, I can't find it. But anyway, <clears throat> this was a fluted bowl, and I thought this would work out perfect for the jellyfish the way it's rounded. And what I did was I took each piece and I drew out with a magic marker how I wanted each piece cut out. So I had a little template to go along with, with my nippers. And I did that to all of the pieces that I was going to use. And I'm just going through this real fast because I did the first one slow. And so I take the nippers, and I'm just going to do this in regular time, and I went around it. And I believe I, when you break up glass, it doesn't always break up just how you want it to. This is fairly thick glass, too. I think I, um, this, I did okay, and I think when I got around to the other side, I might have cut it a little bit too short. But I went around and fixed it by making it just a smaller jellyfish than it was originally supposed to be. You see how I chopped the top off? So I just went ahead and kind of improvised. And sometimes you have to do that with glass. It doesn't always break exactly how you want it to. But I think this one turned out pretty good. And here I lay it on the box so that you can see it. And so I did this with um, all of them. And I think I ended up with about eight of them, even though I only used 
five of them on the project. I ended up doing a light sanding on the edges of these. And didn't they turn out nice? I think they turned out pretty good. So anyway, next I started setting up the jellyfish and what I used for the, those were some small strands of pearls and I cut them to the length I wanted and then when I got them um, to the length I wanted, I took hot glue and glued each of the ends and once that dried, I snipped off the string at the end so that that wouldn't show. And then I used some blue vitrograph glass and also some white vitrograph glass and the vitrograph glass can easily be cut with the nippers and at the very thin areas you can actually snap it with your hands and the pearls are a little long here I do end up shortening them but here you can see two of them what they kind of look like next I took some amber tumbled glass that had a real cool texture to it and drew out some fish and this could ease more easily be done with stained glass you'd get a smoother cut with your stained glass tool, but I really wanted to use this thick amber glass with the texture on it. And then I drew it out and then took my nipper tool and tr uh, went around it and cut with the nipper tool. I did have to take it out to the garage and use my stained glass um, sander on it to make the edges smooth. Now you could also put this back in the tumbler and tumble it for several days to make the edges smooth, but this is what I chose to do. Again, this is glass I picked up at garage sales and thrift stores and tumbled in my tumbler. And I went ahead and did the same thing to about six pieces of glass to make several fish. The magic marker marks can be taken off with rubbing alcohol. Next, I ended up painting these um, great big blue stripes using UV resin, mica powder, and blue glitter. And then in between the blue stripes, I used UV resin clear with some gold glitter. And they turned out real pretty, but they were kind of a pain because you had to, every time you put a stripe on, you had to put it under the UV light. The UV light would only run for one minute. You had to keep on turning it back on and going over it and over it and over it. So I decided to do the smaller fish a little bit different. And what I did was I took a, a marker a blue marker, oil-based marker, and went ahead and painted the stripes on each of them. And then I took clear Elmer's glue mixed with some gold glitter, and I just went ahead and painted them that way to make them glittery. And um, I thought they turned out real pretty. And then uh, for the eyes, I had purchased some eyes off of Amazon, and um, I thought I could use them for a lot of other projects too and a, a lot of people purchase them to put on fishing lures to make them look more real to attract fish. It was $8 for 200 eyes. They came on five separate cards. Everything I use in this video, I will link under the description. They're three-dimensional and they're very realistic looking. You can see I also painted the tails and fins with the clear Elmer's glue and the glitter. What I end up doing is working on one pane at a time. I moved everything from the template to the pane and I mixed up my resin off camera. The resin I'm using for this project is called Craft Resin Creative Liquid Crystal Clear. It's a low viscosity, no VOC resins. The work time is about 40 minutes and it has to, it's a 24 hour curing resin and it has to set at temperatures between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a little, um, shorter temperature span than some of the resins but I really like it it's easy to work with this is another one of the fast setting resins that you cannot use on canvas so anyway um, I usually drizzle it over the glass first put it up around the sides and in the corners and move it around with my little tool to make sure everything's covered and when I first do it I don't um, worry about things getting moved out of place at all because I then come back with a toothpick and push everything back into place. You can see I put the two little levels up there, but the other thing I don't really worry about anymore is the leveling because what I end up doing is after I have everything set and I've used the torch and it's ready to set overnight, I go ahead and pick it up and set it on the floor on two protective um, pieces of paper so that I know it's perfectly level.
Another thing I didn't mention is the blue tape that you see is on the back and it's to help to prevent any resin leaks. I apologize for this paper I have behind it. This is actually a tablecloth from the Dollar Tree and I thought it was going to be good because it was opaque and not translucent like their other tablecloths, but it's kind of distracting and it's difficult probably for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. But anyway, um, here I am going in with my toothpick, straightening everything out, and I'd use the torch several times. And um, then I'd let this sit overnight on the floor. And I do not do the top part until the next day, just so that I don't risk getting sediment in the bottom part. So at the very end here, I take some crushed glass from Michael's. It's the silver reflective glass that they have all the time up at Michael's and I go around the perimeter of the project and I do sprinkle a little in the middle of it. So here's the second window. So I've taken the first window, I've put it on the floor and I've covered the area with a dust cover. This is the second window and again, I'm just working on the bottom portion of it because I don't wanna risk getting anything in it while I work on the top and I'll do the top part tomorrow. And I pretty much basically do this exactly the same. The only thing I don't think I talked about on the other one is I have these little tiny um, beads that are clear and kind of iridescent. And I use those for bubbles. And I put a couple of them on top of each of the fish or above each of the fish. And then again, I take the crushed glass from Michael's and I sprinkle it around the perimeter and a little bit in the center. So this is the next day and the bottom of both of the windows is set so I don't have to worry about sediment getting into it and I'm setting up the top part of both of the windows and I'm just going to go through this real fast. Don't want to bore you with it but I put all the jellyfish at the top and you can see I put um, the smaller fish down at the bottom of the top part of the window. So here I am with the bottom portion of the first window putting the resin on. The only thing that I didn't talk about before was I took some crushed, I lifted up the top part of the jellyfish and sprinkled some crushed glass on top of the vitrograph glass to kind of hide the top of it and then put the top of the jellyfish back on. I don't know if it helped. I think it did maybe a little bit. And the other thing is the, be the strands of beads for the jellyfish. Once you put the resin on, they're much easier to manipulate and kind of twist and turn if you want. Um, and as it thickens up a little bit, you can still get back in there and um, move the the strands of beads to the to the position that you want them. So the in. top portion of the first window is now done and I'm moving on to the top portion of the second window. And here it is. I'm just uh, starting to set it up. In this side I only end up using two jellyfish on the top and I end up putting a seahorse on it because there is not a seahorse on the bottom. So as you can see, I actually cut out a template for the seahorse and taped it to the back of the window so that it could more easily be set up. So here I go again with the resin and you can see the larger fish that I put up at the very top um, that I had made. I think I made about five of them. I ended up using two on this window and one on the other window. So when this is all done again, I cover it with a dust cover and it sits overnight. Hey everyone, <laughs> so I'm actually standing on a step stool so that I could put these up on this little ledge here so that you could see them all at one time. Anyway, this was quite a project and honestly the hardest part of this project was preparing these frames. You know, um, that's one of the things to look for when you go to garage sales. If you do find some old windows, look at the condition of them because that chippy paint was such a pain to get off. And um, I really had to smooth it way down because when I went to paint over it, you could still see the chippy paint under it. And I just didn't like the way it looked. So anyway, just the preparation of the windows was what was the biggest pain. The doing the glass and trying to figure that out was kind of the fun part. But anyway, um, 
So, so they're finished. And like I said, I did one section at a time. It, it would have been too difficult to try to put it all out. I would be afraid that I would get sediment in one. So um, I think it's in your best interest. Even when I do the, um, the more rectangular windows, I try to do one area at a time and wait till the next day and do the next area. And sometimes it'll even sit done for a week, you know, one section until I figure out what to put in the other section. So um, it's just an idea, I don't, you know, whatever works best for you is what works best for you, but that's what works best for me. Anyway, um, the resin that I used, and I'm, I'm on a step stool, <laughs> so I'm reaching over here. This um, craft resin is what I used for this. I am not getting paid or anything. Um, the reason that I chose this, um, back several videos, I talked about that one um, video from Steve McDonald and how uh, different resins yellowed, were more likely to yellow. This was one of the better resins. I don't know if you remember, one of the J. Diction resins um, was really good too. And I started using that, and we found that that wasn't good for um, canvases. I don't know if you remember the whole thing about that. This is another resin that was really good and didn't yellow. Um, I'm sure it does yellow if it's outside, but in his experiment, it didn't over a certain period of time. And... Um, just remember, everybody lives in different parts of the country where I am. I'm here in Florida where it's hot and the sun is extreme. So I'm sure after a while it would yellow. But I just thought that if it was less likely to yellow out in the sun, then maybe it's less likely to yellow indoors. So I don't, I'm not just randomly experimenting with different resins. I really have a purpose when I choose a resin. So, and like I said, I'm not getting paid. But, um, so I don't know if you're remember how I did with the art resin um, and compared it to the jade diction and how it left the fish eyes. Well, this is the crystal clear resin and it also leaves fish eyes on canvas. So don't use this resin on canvas, but it's great for on glass. I really like working with it. It um, cures in 24 hours and it does have a fairly long work time also. And um, the bubbles are pretty easy to get rid of. They um, Some of the uh, quicker setting resins, uh, the bubbles are fewer, but sometimes the bubbles can be harder to get rid of, but I was able to get rid of these okay. So anyway, um, any, anyway I think it turned out cute. Um, I hope you guys can see it okay. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. We've got the Facebook group going now. Uh, people are posting all their um, projects and it's really fun to see everybody's. I hope you guys will join us and post your pictures too. Um, what else do I want to say? If you enjoy the video or enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you um, enjoyed the video, give it a like or a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.